This is part two of this tech lesson and I'll be changing the oil in the rear shock. Click anywhere on the screen to view part one where I change the oil and the front forks. For this project we'll mainly need basic tools and later on we'll need a few specialty tools as well. The first step is to remove the seat and the right side panel. Then we're going to remove the three bolts that hold the muffler on and remove the muffler from the bike. To get access to the shock, we'll have to remove the four subframe bolts so the subframe is loose. On the linkage, we'll remove the rear connecting arm bolt and then we'll just swing the connecting arm down away from the rear shock. In order to get the bolt out, you'll have to lift up on the rear of the bike while pushing the bolt out. The next step is to remove the lower shock bolt. You'll have to lift up on the rear of the bike to get this bolt out also. Before you remove the top shock bolt, you'll have to loosen up the two spring nuts. You can use a screwdriver and a hammer to loosen up the nuts. Before you loosen up the spring, measure the length of the spring so you know where to set it at when we're finished. Once the top spring nut is loose, you can just grab the spring and start spinning it. This will loosen up the spring the rest of the way. Once the spring is loose, you can remove the top shock bolt. To remove the shock from the bike, you'll just have to push the subframe out of the way and pull the shroud out and the shock should come right out. Make sure your air boot clamp is tight when you push the subframe out of the way to get the shock out. Now with the shock off the bike, you want to make sure the spring nuts are all the way at the top of the threads. To remove the spring from the shock, you'll have to pound the outer ring upwards to expose the clip. It's best to use a soft hammer and a screwdriver for this. Once you can get to the clip, remove the clip and the outer ring and spring should slide right off the shock. The next step is to remove the valve stem cap and release all the nitrogen out of the bladder using a valve stem core remover. Once the valve stem core is out, put the cap back on to protect the threads. Now we can remove the compression adjuster from the shock. Once that's out, we can dump the old shock oil into a drain pan. It helps to pump the shock shaft when you're dumping the oil out of the shock. When you're dumping the oil out, there's a small plate that will come out as well. Make sure to keep track of that. After that, we can add new fluid to the shock. To bleed the shock of any air bubbles, pump the shaft several times. Once you've done that, hold the shock at an angle so the hole is at the highest point and fill the rest of the shock with oil. Then install the valve stem core and add a few pounds of pressure to the bladder. You just need to add enough pressure to where the bladder cap comes out of the shock body. Now it's time to install the adjuster and the plate back into the shock body. The plate goes in first with the flat surface facing up as shown. Tighten the adjuster up and wipe all the oil off the shock. Once the adjuster is tight, release any pressure from the bladder. Now the spring can be installed back onto the shock. Most springs usually go on only one way, so make sure you get it on the right way. Once you slide the spring onto the shock, put the outer ring on and install the clip. Take a soft hammer and seat the ring with the clip. Once the shock is finished, you'll have to have the bladder recharged with nitrogen gas. The recommended pressure for this shock is 142 PSI. Most motorcycle shops should be able to do this for you. It'll cost probably 20 or 30 bucks. The next step is to install the shock back onto the bike. 
So you'll have to push the airbox out of the way and move the shroud to get the shock in. It's easiest to install the upper bolt first, then the lower. You'll have to lift up on the rear of the bike to get the lower shock bolt in. On this bike you have to tighten the lower shock bolt before you install the connecting arm back on. The torque spec on the lower shock bolt is 32 foot pounds. The rear connecting arm bolt can then be installed. You'll have to lift up on the swing arm to get the holes line up. Once the linkage is back together, you can reinstall the subframe bolts. The torque value for the upper subframe bolts is 24 foot pounds, and the spec on the right lower subframe bolt is 36 foot pounds, and for the left lower subframe bolt, it's 24 foot pounds. The next step is to reinstall the muffler. On the rear muffler bolt, there's a washer that goes in between the muffler and the subframe, so make sure to install that. Now we can install the side plate and the seat back on the bike. The final step is to take the bike off the stand and compress the rear suspension several times. This helps line up and settle the linkage and the rear shock. The rear shock and the linkage bolts should all be loose when you're doing this. Then we need to torque all the shock and linkage bolts. The torque specification on the both the lower and the upper shock bolts is 32 foot pounds and the spec on all three linkage bolts is 39 foot pounds. All right, that's it for this project. Thanks for watching this tech lesson. Be sure to check out all the previous ones I've done on my channel and also watch out for more of these coming out soon.